Components in Adobe XD consist of text, images, and vector graphics in some combination that can be designed once, then used across projects. If the content within a component needs to be updated, you need only make that change on the main component, and then choose if you'd like to update all instances of that component throughout your work. In this tutorial, I'll get you started building and customizing components in Adobe XD in a few easy steps. From there, we'll publish those components along with colors and character styles as a Creative Cloud library that you and your team can use across all of your projects. I'll be leveraging some of the skills from the Get Started with Adobe XD design tutorial. If you haven't watched that already, you might want to do so, although it's not required. If you want to follow along with me, you'll want to make sure you have the XD Components in Libraries practice file open. You can find a link to that in the description area for this video. With those housekeeping items out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. We'll begin with the process of creating a main component, then reusing it in a design. Components in Adobe XD offer a handy way to design content once, then reuse it throughout your work. They consist of a main component that acts like a parent, with instances or children. When you change the main component, those changes apply to all of the instances in your design. If you're following along with me, you'll want to have Step 1 Create Design Components in the Practice file visible on the Design Canvas. You'll also want the Layers panel open. I opened that up by clicking on the lower left-hand second icon here from the bottom. I also am in Design Mode, and I control my modes here in the upper left-hand corner. What I want to do is go ahead and hold down the space bar and move these artboards more towards the center, and then using my trackpad, I'll zoom in more tightly so that I can see both of these artboards a bit more clearly on the canvas. For this next bit, you probably just want to watch me for a moment. I want to show you a layout feature that works really well with components that I've not explained before, and that's padding. When you work with padding, it allows you to control how much space a group of objects might have around it. Let's say I'm working on a button design, and I have this first button. If I click on it on the design canvas, you can see in the Layers panel that it's a group I've named Button Group, and in it I've got a background rectangle. It's basically a rectangle I drew. I rounded the corners and gave it a fill color. Above that, I have a text object that I named Button Label, and I gave it a name, a button. Those two objects I grouped together, and then I named the group Button Group. In this next step, let's go ahead and play a little bit more with main components and varying their instances. If you want to follow along with me, you'll want to have Step 2, Vary Component Instances in the Practice file visible on the canvas. You'll want to have the Layers panel open. I did so by clicking here in the lower left-hand corner on the Layers icon, and I'm in Design Mode here in the upper left. I want to focus on these three artboards on the right, so I'm going to select them and then hit Command on the Mac or Control on Windows, and the number 3, so that I can bring those into view. All right, I have a design here, and what I want to do is have this top navigation reoccur on the two additional artboards, but I don't want them to remain exactly the same. I'd like to define it as a component so that I can keep some of the elements consistent while making those changes. When I click on this first artboard here, in that header area, I can see that I have a component defined and it's a main component. I can tell by the green highlight and the diamond in the upper left hand corner. It's called Nav Mobile Top. Looks good. What I want to do is duplicate it or create instances for these second two artboards. For that, I'll make sure I have that first component selected on the canvas, and in the right menu, I'll just copy it to the clipboard. XD supports paste in place from one artboard to another if you select the destination artboards by their title. So I'll come in and select the second. I'll hold the shift key and select the third artboard. Now in the right menu, once again, I can just select paste and they'll paste in that right location. So by definition now, I've got a main component with the filled in diamond. I've got an instance with a hollow diamond and another instance here.
In addition to adding and removing objects within a component, you can also nest them inside of one another and swap them out for one another quite easily. If you're following along with me, you'll want to be in step three, nest and swap components within the practice file. You're going to also want to have the library panel open. I'll go ahead and switch over to the library panel. I can do that by clicking here in the lower left hand corner, not on the layers icon, but the one just above it, which is the libraries icon. That's going to bring up that libraries panel and bring me into the document assets area. With that all set, I want to focus on the three artboards here in this section. So I'll come in and select them and I'll bring them into view so that I can see them a bit more clearly. Okay, in this step, we're going to do two things. One is I'm going to show you how you can nest components inside of one another. And then the second is we're going to swap some components out for one another after we've done that. I do want to say that I'm starting to assume you've got some pretty good skills from some of the other tutorials that we've done during this course. So I'm going to leverage some of those skills for things like repeat grid as we proceed in this step. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in even tighter so I can see what I've got going on here. Up here towards the top, I have some examples of content. These examples, if I press and drag across them, what you'll notice is they have a green highlight color here in this area. These are all converted to components. I did that earlier when I prepared this file. To the right here, I have just the label chair, so it's just a text field. I've not converted that to anything. What I want to do is match the design I have here on the left with this menu drawer example on the right. This is basically the menu we used earlier when we were showing how to use overlays. As you work more and more in Adobe XD, I think you'll find there are colors, character styles, and common components that you use over and over from project to project. Libraries and the Creative Cloud make it very easy to publish this content so that it's easily available for reuse. If you're following along with me, you'll want to have Step 4, Publish a Library in the Practice file visible on the Design Canvas. You'll also want to switch over to the Libraries panel on the left-hand side. So to do that, I'm going to come here into the lower left, and instead of the Layers panel, I'll select the Libraries panel just above it. I can see here towards the top that I'm in the document assets area of the libraries panel. Next up, what I want to do is focus on these three artboards here towards the side. So I'll come in and select them and I'll bring them into view by scaling to fit them on the design canvas. Now in an earlier tutorial during this getting started series, I showed you how to extract character styles and colors. I want to include those as part of the library we're going to publish. So to do that here in the document assets section, I see I have no colors, no character styles that have already been created. I want to add some in and the quickest way to do that will be to click on the title of this artboard typography. Then in the panel in that character styles area on the right hand side, I'm just going to click the plus sign. XD extracts all of those character styles and defines them for me here. I want to do the same with the color artboard. So I'll come click on its title and in the color section of the panel, click on the plus sign and I bring those colors over. Now that I have the colors and character styles set, let's just kind of revisit how you add components. If I look here at this third artboard, I'll select it and zoom in on that content. Earlier on, I published up a library and I shared it with my colleague, Ike. Let's go ahead now and create a new document and see what it's like to consume from that library. For that, I'm going to pull down under File to New, and I'm just going to create a new blank document. I'll put that into position here, and let's go ahead and add a couple of artboards so we have a place to add our content. Brand new document, no content really included in it at the moment. What I want to do is go in and browse a pre-existing library that's been shared with me. The way I'll do that is I'll make sure I have the libraries panel open. I can see that it's open here on the left hand side. As I look up, I notice that I have no colors, character styles, or components in this current document. Notice that it's indicating I'm in the current document here. 
If I click this left arrow, it takes me up a level and it allows me to see all of the libraries either I've created, that Alturo brand kit that I created, or that have been shared with me by other folks like this coffee shop UI kit.